<laughs> anyway, so what can you tell us uh, with regards to this event? Well, I think, honestly speaking, on May 9th, 2001, uh, when it gets to any May 9th, I feel very emotional because uh, personally, I had a friend who passed on during this time. And uh, let me tell you for a fact that if it wasn't, I don't know we were in Legon, eh? we were in Legon and it was exams week. And if it wasn't because of the exam week, we would have found ourselves, I, I personally would have also been at the st- stadium because uh, well, those days, any time the and Hearts played, we go to the stadium to support uh, our teams, our various teams. This is my colleague, my good friend I'm talking about was a Hearts of Hope fan. So he, he loved I mean, football more than I think, more than I did. Because most of us were thinking about, once we were all thinking about it, I'm still thinking about Hearts of Hope. So amongst all the squad, he was the only one who went. And unfortunately, he didn't come back. So in May 9th, I feel very, very emotional. I remember this day. And at the same time, I also thank God that probably it wasn't because of exams. I might have also found myself at the place. Because I didn't ask myself, what really happened? What caused all this thing? In case, in case you don't know, this is the biggest disaster that has happened in Africa. I mean, when you are wasting all the disasters in Africa, one to six people dying at the stadium. Yes, Akash Sports Stadium disaster is one of the biggest in Africa. And I think in the world, it's rated either third or fourth, I stand to be corrected. So it is not a small disaster. And think of the fact that it was just a, a small thing that to get this thing. It could have been so much been avoided. I mean, this thing would have, could have been avoided totally. Hooliganism in stadium. What happened was, Hassel Folk was playing Kotoko in one league match. And most of the decisions went against Kotoko. I think Kotoko, one of the goals were ruled out. Eventually, Hassel Folk won on the day. And after the match, Kotoko supporters were peeped and decided to take the law into their own hands. Started destroying the across four stadium chairs and throwing it on the pitch. Now, the police available at that time, instead of just moving into the crowd, making some arrests, scaring the people here and there, started throwing tear gas into the stands. So, it is this tear gas that started spreading and caused fear and panic in the supporters and the, all of them rushed tried rushing out of the stadium just to avoid the tear gas. KTU Radio Eventually, 7.7. unfortunately for them, most of the exits were not opened. So, and you know that if you've been to a stadium before, most of the entrances, because of checking tickets, they are not big. They are quite small. I mean, when you are really entering a stadium, that guy is quite cumbersome. Um, so, this small space, and imagine this about, the stadium was packed to capacity, so you can imagine. Everybody trying to go out of the place. And then the tear gas wasn't, it wasn't only just one tune, a lot. So this caused a lot of panic. And, and me, the ones for some were for, uh, suffocating, others were being walked on, others were being pushed on the ground. Because actually, we don't want to even go back there for our listeners to recap. I mean, families who, who lost loved ones should we even start thinking about that. Bottom line of the whole thing, have we, have we, have we changed? Has this May 9th thing, every year, the GFA, football people, all those who are in football, we kind of celebrate, it's not a celebration, but kind of remember this day, some, they go and lay it at all the various places, and they, make, they do some kind of ceremony to remember all these fans. This thing should have really, this thing should have really gone into the heads of supporters to know that things like this cannot happen again. But can all do see? Currently, as we speak, Ghana Premier League is still experiencing some of these things. Really? I'm telling you for a fact. If you go, there are a lot of cases that are even still being held because of people going to stadiums and the supporters. Some players were beating, some referees were beating. It's still happening because people have been learned from this. People are being hurt here and there. Um, so our, our people have not learned. So I think that May 9 should be days that we should really continue to hammer and recap the day so that people will know. Maybe we were not born by then, so they don't know the essence of what happened or they don't know how disastrous what happened was. We need to be drumming in for all those who were in the middle days to know that it was a very big disaster and people really lost loved ones. Legalism in football is a no-no. 
And when you are going into a football match, it's either you draw, you win, or you lose. And supporters should be able to take that. The referees are in charge of the game. If you were today, you have been cheated. There are, there are ways and means to go and uh, um, handle such issues. You don't take the law to your own hands, try to beat the referee. Just recently, Olympics, it's on one of the games, Olympics or one of the teams, and the referee had to rush to, they rushed to the car that the referee were, and he was really lucky that he got into the car before the supporters got there. Would have been another problem. You understand? Another one, another example is, another match was ongoing, the coach was sitting on the bench, and uh, before he realized, the coach has moved his chair from the bench onto the middle of the pitch. That's the thing. I'm talking about Ghana Premier League. But match no cost. It was still go ongoing. And the person brought them. The coach brought the chair into the middle of the pitch. And everybody was amazed. Ah, why have you done? And he said that. He did that because somebody, some of the supporters behind is where he was sitting initially, were throwing union and were spitting on him. So he had to relocate. And the best place you could also think of relocating was on the pitch. So Kasa, if all these things are still going on, how do we handle this problem that happened in 2009? 2001, I beg your Ghana. 126 people died. 126. Just going to watch a football match. And I think there were a lot of issues. People were blamed and all that. For me, I think that one first of all, the police was very unprofessional, throwing tear gas consistently. At the point, they had one policeman telling the other one, you should stop throwing this tear gas. But this tear gas guy was throwing, I'm saying, now I have fired up, I'm so to to be at the uh, hmm. Then the referees too must also apply the rules to the latter. You are human beings. You have not done that. You are human beings. But don't don't intentionally overlook clear cut fouls, clear cut goals. I mean, don't overlook the rules to favor a team. Because these are some of the things that, is, I mean, incite the supporters, get angry, and then they start doing all these things. Because I think the late night is an emotional day. We continue to send our condolences to the families who lost loved ones during these times. Um, Major big, big, big supporters lost. As of course, for example, lost a lot of their supporters. The same for Kumasi and Santi Kotoko. So, uh, condolences to both teams and condolences to the families of the loved, the loved ones. And condolences to myself and a friend of mine who was gone. And we yeah, were really lucky that we were able to manage the right that exam that semester. It wasn't easy. It's a pity. Um, so, um, you are, rem- you are uh, remembering your friend today, right? Right. So what's the occasion? What are you going to do? In this special oh, plan? Oh, for, for, for the show. Uh, peaceful rest for the show. Continue to rest in peace. I mean, nothing. What else can I do? I, as I'm saying, these things have still not... I mean, I, it made me look like I have for like four years. I hadn't entered the stadium before. Because of this disaster, I stopped going to stadiums. Because you could never be sure whatever will happen there. You, you, you understand? I mean, but stadiums are meant to be places of relaxation. Yeah, and paranoid. You know, people send their family to stadiums. People send their as young as two year olds to the stadium. But sometimes you are scared to do that because you never know the outcome. So, yeah, it's an emotional day. I remember all those who lost their lives. Yeah. Oh. Thank you so much, um, Dave Kokoda, um, Head of Sports at KT Radio 87.7 and also the Programs Manager for KTU Radio. Thanks so much for giving us an insight into the Accra Sports Stadium disaster which happened on May 9, 2001 and took away 126 lives. You should learn from some of these. Right. Have a good day, sir. Thank you.